Okay, welcome back. So if you recall, we were actually just working with the token and from the player as well. So what we're going to do is get the user's Discord information. And to do that, we're going to use one of the few um, resources that Node.js gives to us to work with automatically. So the first one is going to be called get. Okay, and we're going to do a from HTTPS. So this get request <clears throat> is something we need to do to get the information from the Discord API. So we're going to be making a request out to Discord with this token and getting the information that has to go with it. So if we do const result equals, we're going to call this await new promise. So a promise is something that's going to be fulfilled in the future. And we also need to make this whole section here actually async. So we're going to do async just like that. And in this promise, we're going to add a resolve. And a resolve is what will be returned when this promise is fulfilled. So in the future, when we resolve this, we are now fulfilling the promise into this variable called result. So if that's not already confusing enough, let's make it more confusing. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and uh, add a constant string for the API. So we're going to call this const uh, API equals HTTPS. And this is actually going to be a string HTTPS slash slash. And we're going to do discord app.com API users at me. And where we got this information by was by, or we got this information by looking at the OAuth2 specification that Discord provides. So they have their own API for this type of thing, but this is the only one that we're going to uh, be working with here. So this API, we're going to make a GET request. And a GET request is basically you reach out to the server, you give them something to work with, and they give you a result back. So we're going to be doing a GET request. So let's put the API in here, and then we're going to add some headers. So we're going to do an object and then we're going to do headers and we're going to add a authorization header and then we're going to put the token inside of here. But it's a very specific type of token. It's actually called a bearer token. I think I said that in my last tutorial. So if we do bearer and we're using backticks here because we're going to do a little bit of string interpolation. And if we do a dollar sign and some brackets like that, and we toss the token variable just inside of there. This will now append it to the string inside, and you will see that this is a full string with bear, and then the token, which might match something like this down here at the bottom. Great. So now that we have the get request ready, we need to resolve the get request. So there is a callback here, and it says res. So we're going to use that. It's going to be res fat arrow function and then we're going to do resolve and we're going to return some information about what we're resolving um, one we're going to call it a code and this is going to be called res.status code so this is information or this is going to return a specific number it's like a 200 201 204 200 basically means that it's okay that we got the result we got the stuff that we wanted if it's not 200 then we have a problem so we're going to handle that by assigning it to this object and then for the data we're going to do data and we need to get the data that is being passed so the best way to explain that is res also has a few specific functions that comes with it. So we can do res on, and this is an event, this is an event as well. So when the res, when the result comes back to us, we're going to fire up a data event. Okay. And in this data event, we're going to be receiving a whole, like we're going to receive a buffer is what we're going to be receiving. So this is going to be called buffer. And we need to take this resolve and put this right inside of our res on. And when we get the buffer, we just convert it to a string. Okay. So as you can see, 
Let me step through this again because this is a little this is a little complicated, a little weird. You may have never seen this type of stuff before. We're making a get request to this API, okay? If I put this in my browser, I get this unauthorized, okay? So with a bearer token, I can become authorized to get this user's information. And when I add this authorization in the headers, we get a result. This result here has an on function. So when the result comes back and it has data, we're gonna receive that data as a buffer. And when we receive that data as a buffer, we need to convert it to a string, and we also need to get the current status code that came along with this data. So then when we resolve, all of this gets sucked all the way back up, and then we get the result of this, which matches this right here. So when we have this specific object here, which is now stored inside of this result, we can now move on to the next part, which is if result status code, or we're going to call that uh, code, is not equal to 200. So it's not okay. <laughs> then we're going to return here. And we're just going to stop and say console log, we could not retrieve the Discord information. And what we could do now is um, down here at the bottom, we can console log the data that we just got. So it's actually in a JSON string format. And JSON strings are just a really great way to send lots of data as one giant string. So we're going to go ahead and do const discord data equals json parse and then we're going to do result dot data and that is going to be this result and then this data that's being passed here okay and then we're going to do a console log on the discord data so you guys can see what that looks like and we're missing one additional thing there is one more type of error that we can get from get so if we do get on we can actually handle an error here and an error always contains a status code. So we're actually gonna do a resolve here as well. So we can resolve here, or we can resolve here, depending on the problem. And we're gonna do code equals e dot status code. And then the data, we're just gonna keep it blank because obviously we're not gonna be getting any data from an error. So for here, we're gonna put, we cannot retrieve the Discord information. So when this fails, it'll return a failing version of the resolve, okay? So let's remove that token at the top, and then let's go ahead and try our login function in-game again. So let's go check out how that looks. Go in-game, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect. At the top, we now have our little button. Let's hit uh, login. And we got our data back here on the server side. And as you can see, we received some information about my Discord. So we have my ID, we have a discriminator, an avatar hash, and things along those lines. So now what can we do with this data? You're probably wondering. Well, we have an ID. This ID will never, ever, 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 ever change. <laughs> Is the, is the best way I can put this. So we're gonna store that ID into the database. And in order to do that, we need to set that up to basically check if um, this user already exists inside of the uh, database, okay? So there's a few things that we need to do with the database first before we store this user's information, okay? So, Let's take a look at server.mjs. We have this SQL here, right? Um, so here's the unique thing about this database. We don't ever have to do this again to work with our database. In this one spot, this SQL is now initialized. So I can take this right here and I can copy the import for my SQL. And I'm gonna go up here at the top, paste it right in here. And I just need to adjust the path to go one more folder back and we will now have direct access to SQL, okay? And in order to work with the database, we're gonna do const db, just like we did before. And now we're gonna do new SQL. The only difference this time is that the data, the database is already set up. And because this file is being imported 
after we set up the database, that means we will get a instance of the SQL connection that already has all the connection parameters stored inside of it. So we don't have to do anything different. We just call new SQL, we get our connection, and now we can begin working with the database. So <laughs> let's look at what we need to do to get some of the information um, <clears throat> in regards to our tables. So the first thing that we need to check for is we need to check if this user is already exists inside the table. So we need to look at the account um, repo. In order to look at the account repo, we need to work with the database. <laughs> so we'll do dp select data. And what this is gonna do is gonna ask you, what repo name would you like to look at? Well, I wanna look at the account repo. And then what field names are we looking for? Well, I'm looking for one called discord. And then how's and then here's your data that's going to be returned back to you, okay? So eventually we're going to get this data that comes back to us, and inside this data, we need a we need to check each individual one to see if our data exists. So <coughs> this is going to come back as an array, or it's going to come back as undefined. So if this is undefined, so if data equals undefined, what we're going to do is we're just going to return here and we're going to skip past it. Skip past undefined data. Okay. And if it does have something inside of it, we're going to look at the data that's inside. We're going to look and see what information it might contain, but we don't really know what that's going to be yet. We don't know what the format of that's going to be yet. So we're going to console log data down here for the future, and we're going to write the function that's going to insert a new character into the database. Okay. So because this is going to be potentially undefined, we're going to write a function down here and it's going to be called, uh, well, actually we could just write it right inside of it. Um, this is going to be called db. Uh, it's going to be upsert data, <clears throat> upsert data, just like that. And then we just need to pass the discord information. So we're going to do discord and then we're going to do discord data and it's going to be this ID here. So we're going to do dot ID. So this is now following the tables column format. So if we look at the entities, we have a column called discord. It takes the type of text and the ID is going to be auto generated. Great. So now that we have this, we will take a look at, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Okay. It'll upsert the data and then it's going to give us a result back after we specify our, our where we're going to put it. We're going to put it in account and the callback is going to be res. Okay. And inside of res, we're actually probably going to get an ID back. So we're just going to console log that for now so we can see the format of it when we register this user. So let's do alt v server, run that again. We're going to do our little reconnect here. All right, and we're going to hit login. Beautiful. Okay, so down here at the bottom, we just got a result back of ID of one. So what does that mean? What does this what does this specifically mean? So if we go and take a look at PHP my admin, let's see if I still have that open. We're going to go ahead and go into account. And as you can see, we have a Discord ID here and an ID of one. And as you can see, it begins with two, zero, and two. So if we go and look back at the ID, as you can see, we've now stored that data inside of our database. Hmm. So the next thing that we're going to do is we need to see what data this is when we look it up and the result is not defined. So that's what this second console log is for. So in the first instance, because we had nothing inside of the table, this is what happened first. So we're going to control C and we're going to start our server again. We're going to re log into our little uh, server here. Hit login. Well, let's try again. There it is. All right. So it looks like we got 
an object back. So we're gonna so what this means is we're gonna have a bunch of objects inside of here. This is an array. And inside of this array of objects, we need to look for a matching ID. So um, does account exist is what we're gonna call this. And then we're gonna look through the data. So we're gonna do data find, or actually we'll call this account. So data find, and then we're gonna do account or ACC equals, uh, well, this is, uh, what we're doing is de or we're deconstructing a um, an array at this point. So inside of this array, we now have a reference to each individual element, and each individual element has something called Discord. So we're going to do if, or we're going to make it a, a bracket function first here. So let's expand it like that, and we're going to do if account dot Discord equals Discord data dot ID. So if these match, we're gonna return this element, okay? And then this element's gonna be inside of here. And if it's, and if this account is not defined, we are going to insert that data into the database like that. So we're gonna do the same thing we did up here, but we're gonna do it down here. Otherwise, if the account does exist, this is now an existing account at this point, then we just need to simply log in the user. And we don't seem to have chat imported here, so we're gonna take chat with us into the Discord section. And we're gonna do chat.send. So if we do chat send, and we're gonna send it um, the, the player, and we're gonna say, you have now logged in. So if we do a refresh on this, go back into our server, reconnect, oops, spelled that wrong. Give it a second. There's usually a little tick it'll happen. There it is. I'm gonna hit login. And it looks like it just inserted us into the database again. So. Okay, so after a little bit of looking around, I actually found out what it was. It's actually this little return right here. This is supposed to return account because otherwise it's returning nothing. So we can now uncomment the rest or uncomment the rest of the stuff that we just made. And down here at the bottom, we're going to say you have now logged in and then we can say player your ID is and we're going to do plus Oops. Plus account.id. I'm going to refresh that. I'm going to reconnect. And if I hit login, one more time. There it is. You have now logged in. Your ID is undefined. <laughs> That's not very good. So we're missing something there. Um, Reasons why, hmm. Oh, because we did not select ID. So let's go ahead and add that in there as well. So we'll add ID and then Discord, and then we'll do that and refresh. And we should get the desired result we were looking for here. So let's do reconnect. <clears throat> and we'll do login at the top. You have now logged in and your ID is one. All right, so now we have successfully, after a little bit of manipulation, gotten a Discord authenticated server for our GTA 5 server. So now we can use Discord to log in. Nobody has to remember any passwords except for their Discord password, but it takes the entire stress of encrypting passwords. But it takes the entire stress of Discord passwords off your back. Anyway, so that's it for this one. And then the next one, we're going to clean this up and make it into a true login with position restoring and everything else along those lines.